So hello, beautiful Magic Month tribe, and welcome to Magic Month of July. I'd be really grateful to those of you listening live if you can use the chat box and let me know that you can hear and that the technology is working okay. If you haven't met me before, my name is Karila, and I am from the Starlight Temple. And Starlight does all sorts of courses and ceremonies and... um, travel and all sorts of things that are about using channeled and spiritual tools to become more connected to live in a more aligned and empowered way and magic month is my oldest webinar and it's something that i feel like i will always do because it is so helpful to me like i i love knowing the energy forecast for the month ahead it just really helps me and hopefully you to align with the best times to manifest the best times to heal to understand the month ahead and to plan as we would for british weather (laughs) and so lovely to see some faces that and names not faces that i recognize um and some new ones and i'm really glad that you are all here thank you for coming live so let's begin with a meditation i'm really i'm sorry before we begin with the meditation i'm really excited about july um it feels you know in a way this year has had quite a lot of yang energy in it or well, certainly that's been my experience. Um, and it's had quite a lot of like leadership leaping forward. My guides are calling 2023 a pilgrimage year, which is all about like leaps of faith. <laughs> and I I feel like July has got this really much needed feminine theme, even though it's fairly busy. Uh, Astrologically, it's pretty exciting. It's got some pretty big stuff. I really feel like it's going to bring in a bit of balance and it's got a bit of a feminine feel to it when I tune in, which I think some of you, (laughs) some of you uh, that are um trail blazers and way showers and leaders that have maybe been like supercharged this year taking loads of leaps of faith um will be grateful for the energy of July and I invite you all now to close your eyes and take a moment take this now Spend time opening your heart. I have a wonderful new technique that my guides gave to uh, the people doing the Japanese channeling course that I run for people in Japan recently. And it's to focus on opening the bottom of your heart So if you imagine your heart as being quite similar to your aura and having poles, a bit like you have your star uh, portal and your earth star portal at the top and bottom of your aura, your heart has very similar poles. And I just want you to connect to the south pole of your heart. And as you do feel this south pole opening, And as you do, notice how in the bottom of your heart opens, you drop. Into your body. And as you drop into your body. Notice that actually in your body, whatever is going on in your life, 
And I know many of you have many, many things going on. There is a peacefulness. Quietness. A deep trust. That belongs to the heart of the earth. And I invite you to breathe into this place of trust and space, choosing to expand the space inside of you, Seem to expand the quietness inside of you. Choosing to expand the peace. Inside of you, as you feel source light filling this time in this space. And your aura ceiling from top to bottom. The white and golden light, so only love and only light can enter into your energy. When you open your heart to magic month of July. Beautiful, 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 beautiful ones. What is July all about? So, uh, those of you that are regulars to Magic Month will know that I feel very strongly after years of doing this that July, that um, what's at the start of the month is kind of like sets the scene for what the month is all about it's like it's like the rolling it's like the teaser <laughs> you know the the advert for the month astrologically <laughs> and the first thing that's happening in july is on the second of july venus who's in leo is square with uranus in taurus and so Venus is, is, that's the, you know, Venus in Leo, that's the first statement of the month. Venus is about the feminine. She is about love and heart and sexual energy and feminine magic and softness. And in Leo, it's a, she's about leadership. She's about charisma. She's about shining and, and uh, being king, queen of the jungle. And then Uranus in Taurus is quite interesting because Uranus is like rebellion and revolution and Taurus is home and uh, stability and, and food and, and the real kind of basic needs that are very the opposite of revolution. <laughs> And, and a square in astrology means like conflict or tension. And when I, normally it's between the two, but when I tuned into this, kind of from a channeling energy point of view, what I got was that what July is about is about the battling within the feminine energies and some of that warring having an opportunity to be healed. And when I talk about the battling within the feminine energies. Uh, what I saw and what I mean is that, you know, there's the feminine that like is like Taurus and likes to make home and 
the role is to cook and nurture and nourish and mother. And then there's the wild feminine <laughs> that is like sexual and dangerous and a powerful creatrix. And of course, that's only two aspects of the multi aspect feminine, but I feel like our feminine energy culturally, whether we are male or female or unity, often gets like pulled around like it's what you can only be one of those in society and what i what i saw when i tuned into this like opening of july was like this month if if you get the balance right if you do the healing work there's like a real upgrade of that separation between those two energies so that you can be in your your creatrix manifesting tantric power not at the expense of your home and your groundedness and your mothering nurturing softer power within the feminine within within the way that you you create and receive and you know that's what I feel this this month is about. And straight after that, on July 3rd, we go into the Capricorn full moon. So we'll already be in the energy of that. It's a super moon. Um, actually, I don't know if it's a super moon. One of them is a super moon. Forgive me. I'll check for you. <laughs> One of the moons is super. And then we go into the Capricorn full moon. And, um, you know, Capricorn is like, the goat that travels up the mountain like all of the themes of Capricorn are about motivation and determination and in some ways resilience and the long road and you know this moon it feels like it could be kind of heavy and especially with that feminine emotional almost tantrumy but it also feels like the month is saying like this is the end of the road for that journey. Like you are really nearly up the mountain. This journey with the separation in the feminine, however it's played out in your life and it will have play, played out in everybody's life. It, it, it's, it's coming, it's coming home and the moon is gonna help to, to clear it out. You know, the moon is going to help to bring out the last dregs and the last shadows. And um, I agree with you, Carol. Like everybody, no one is different. And no matter what we choose, we are all one. I'm more talking about the separation within us, the the conditioning that um, the feminine archetypes and the story of the feminine in Pisces has given us and how that's affected our energy as opposed to it not being true that we are all one it's more about like the separation within us that that we are all on a journey to heal and so and in a way what I feel like the astrology of this full moon is saying is that you know, it's, it's kind of time to come into more ease, which is the feminine way. It's like once you finally get up the mountain, <laughs> everything you've been working towards, maybe maybe that leap of faith that you've been like actively striving for through this, this year, July is the time to start relaxing into it, to start allowing it all just to come and magnetise. And that's what happens when your inner nurture and your crazy power harmonize within you. Ease happens, receptivity happens. And so this is a fabulous moon for healing, especially any healing to do with the feminine. Because like I said, I feel like this month is all about the feminine. It's all about rebirth. It's all about rebirthing the heart. And straight after that in the kind of follow on <laughs> from the the full moon still in the energy of the full moon we have a, a serious gateway 
and the Sirius Gateway. Sirius is known as like our spiritual sun. Um, in Egypt, Sirius was the star of goddess Isis, and she rose over the cycles of life and death and rebirth. And this star represents freedom and spiritual intelligence. And this star in the beginning of July aligns with our sun. And it, it's it's like extra, our sun, which represents our truth in astrology, gets flooded with, with our spiritual sun. And so it's like spiritual clarity, spiritual rebirth. And for me, this whole period, so from the beginning of July, from the 1st of July up until the 4th, 5th of July is an opportunity to streamline yourself, to rebirth yourself, to really invite, if if what I said about the wild feminine and the, the more homely feminine speaks to you, if it resonates with you, it, it's to, to look at where those things are compartmentalized in your life and, and bring them together. And really let the part of you that's been striving and struggling, let that part of you be reborn. You can call upon this gateway. It's an amazing time to manifest, amazing time to do a vision board, an amazing time to channel, an amazing time to be of service to ask for your path of service to to make an offering to make a commitment to and i don't mean a commitment to anyone else i mean a commitment to your higher self a commitment to mother earth a commitment to stepping up into more of your higher self and destiny and at the same time there's this whole like releasing and letting go that that according to the astrology is going to happen emotionally of of that which isn't of service to you and so it's a nice big wave at the start of the month of really powerful light activations energies it's epic and then it goes really quiet <laughs> astrologically it goes really spacious and still and, and that, I think, is also important because, you know, the primordial magic of the feminine, that the feminine is always creating in the end and returning to in the end, the kind of zero point for the feminine is space. And to me, what the month is saying is, like, if you, if you want this promise, this astrological prophecy or promise that is written in the stars this month fulfilled then you need to give space and then on July 17th after all of that space we go into the new moon and I I feel like that's where you're really going to feel the rebirth if you do do the space work if you do the inner spaciousness work similar to what we did at the beginning similar to the opening meditation just calling that space into yourself you will really be feeling by the new moon this this fresh energy this new energy this new new beginning and it's a big new new beginning what's coming later on in the month is quite huge really July is really when the feminine cycle, if you're regular, regular to Magic Month, then you listen to, to Magic Month all the time, <laughs> which I know some of you do, um, then you will know that July is nearly always the feminine theme because it's, it's when the feminine cycle of the year begins again. And so we have the Cancer New Moon on the 17th of July and, and with it all of that wonderful emotion 
this month is very much about feeling, feeling yourself and your truth and letting your feelings flow freely. I feel like that is part of how you will integrate these feminine aspects within yourself. Just feel it all. It's an amazing moon for healing. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing moon for any kind of peace practice, any kind of mindfulness or gentleness or flotation therapy, it's cancer, anything that is nourishing and gentle and soothing of the the sensitivity that this new moon and this new beginning is going to... I feel very strong, the energy of July, so I feel like it's really going to bring it up through you. And why it's so strong, and this is the most important thing that's happening in July, is the the nodes are changing. And so the lunar nodes, they're really important astrologically because they, they're mathematical points between the sun and the moon, <laughs> um, but they are deeply connected to our fate and our destiny, and they are about our our future and and kind of our past life experiences so our real kind of destiny and our real crazy level of past where we are going from and and going to and um every 18 months they change and then they affect the eclipses and the healings and everything else and so they're like really significant changes that um happen and What's happening on this moon is the lunar nodes that have been in Taurus and Scorpio for the last uh, year and a half are flipping. And so, you know, the eclipse journey you've been on, the healing journey, the last year and your ha- last year and a half is completing, coming to completion. And So this is time, like this rebirth is the embodiment and the integration of that journey. So it's a really powerful time on this new moon to think back over the last year and a half. And write about the journey, journal about it, tune into it. What did you learn? What has it taught you? What gifts and blessings did it have? How did it grow you? And what's completing now? Because that is the journey that was healing. And what we have is the North Node in Aries. And Aries is the beginning. It's the beginning of the cycle. So we have this double new beginning energy. And Aries is also leadership, and I feel like this is really, because of the feminine themes this month, it's like stepping up into leadership and into what feminine leadership means to you. And then the South Node is in Libra. And to me, what it's saying is like, moving forward, your, your leadership needs to come from balance. You know, Libra is all about the scales and the balance. And I had a wonderful channeling recently where the guys were talking about how, you know, those of us that care about balance, that value balance, we often don't fulfill our dreams because we believe that that the pursuit of our, what we truly, really want it will be at the expense of our work-life balance, will be at the expense of the balance that we value so highly. And what the guides were saying is they were like, but what you need to understand is is achieving the balance as opposed to avoiding the imbalance, but achieving the balance and finding that middle line and finding that sanctuary of the center and and nourishing it and nurturing it that is where 
the most fulfilling destiny will flow through. But you have to not be avoiding being out of balance. You have to fully commit to the balance and lead through the balance. And that's what I think this next lunar lunar node journey is all about. It's about like how do you lead and trailblaze and ascend and achieve through the center, through the balance. And of course, the the feminine creative wisdom and that unity of of those those great feminine powers within all of us is part of that. And so this moon is really significant. Whatever's going on, whatever you're feeling, whatever's happening, it's going to impact the next 18 months going to be giving you look at the map of your life <laughs> and set intention because it's going to set a really good intention spend your time with your intention because it is going to um ripple out into the next 18 months particularly your healing journey your eclipse windows um all of that and then on the 21st of july the sun is opposite Pluto and Pluto is the, in a way is like the most important astrological planet this year because Pluto um, in March um, moved into Aquarius. It's now moved back into Capricorn, but that move like is Pluto only moves every 25 years. It hasn't been in Aquarius for 200 years. Um, it's only temporarily back in Capricorn and then it will um move into Aquarius for for 25 years and so um, this last moment of Pluto in Capricorn is also the completion of that mountain the 25 year mountain that you have been climbing <laughs> the 25 year exploration of top down power that is head over heart that you that we have all been exploring one way or another this is the completion and the sun is our truth so this is a moment to reflect especially on what's happened since march especially on the last 25 years it's a really really powerful time to do a letting go ceremony it's a really really powerful time to do deep healing to do alchemy to do shadow work to really get into the like deep 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 stuff and release it's a really powerful time if you if you only do one thing on the 21st call your power back to say i call all the power and energy i have given away back to me now and actually feel it coming back to you and then on July 22nd, Venus is going retrograde. <laughs> and Venus, like I said, she's love and heart and romance and relationship and sexual energy. And the Venus retrograde, it's not every year. The retrograde, what a retrograde is, is when it, it appears as if it's going the opposite direction in our sky. And so everything about that planet goes internal. And also all of the challenges that are connected to that planet come up. And Venus retrograde is one of the hardest. If you are in an unhealthy relationship, <laughs> that which you need to see is going to come up. If you have an unhealthy relationship with yourself, that which you need to see is going to come up. If Venus has, her retrograde has a big effect on us because ultimately we're mainly heart for all like we pretend not to be and she's in leo at the moment and so leo is about um leadership and charisma and um also about being fun and playful and courageous and so this is about a retrograde of feminine <laughs> leadership and it's happening this is so cool. It is happening on Mary Magdalene's feast day. 
<laughs> so Mary Magdalene, her feast day is the 22nd, and Mary Magdalene holds the feminine story. She is the story of the divine feminine, and it is happening on her feast day. That's when the retrograde starts. It goes on until September 3rd. And Mary Magdalene's feast day is also the turning of the feminine cycle of the year. And so this feast day, this Mary Magdalene feast day has so much power for change, so much transformation, so much opportunity to release, to release old relationships, to release old body stuff, to release old sexual stuff. It's just like rebirth, let go. I would, I would use it to unite these two, these two um, amazing, thank you, I'm glad you said wow, because I agree, I'm like, it's so cool that it's starting on Mary Magdalene's feast day, I would, uh, and it's so cool that it's happening just as like the sky at the beginning of the month predicted, and so I would use it to unite these nurturing, soft, gentle feminine, and these wild, powerful feminine energies within you, I would do a healing, do a ceremony, do whatever feels right for you and like try and do it all because if you ignore Venus retrograde <laughs> you just have to live it you might as well like actually do the healing at the beginning <laughs> then live it and let it come up and also on the 22nd of July we move out of Cancer into Leo so on top of that it's like let's move out of the like emotional story of the feminine which to me is in both of like the feminine you know histor historically we have this thing of like feminine hysteria and stuff like that and feminine females not being good leaders and like literally on this day as well leo seasons begins and the lioness begins to roar and it's like out of the hysteria of the feminine because she's separated and she's in distress and into this beautiful golden energized heart-driven leadership energy lioness energy it's all about fire and passion and goldenness and and in a way cat power <laughs> you know like the way the cats are like yeah i know how to manifest i'm not gonna please you <laughs> it's bringing all of this in like shining your light finally bringing the feminine out of the shadows and this is what i feel like the end of the month is about or the middle of the month you know, all of this is happening on one day, on Mary Magdalene's feast day. And then on July 23rd, Chiron, who to me is so important because Chiron is the wounded healer. And for me, humanity is Gaia's, planet Earth's wounded healers. <laughs> and so what Chiron's doing is really important. And literally the day after Chiron goes into retrograde, the July 23rd and so this month is like heal look at yourselves dive deep and I feel like the fact this is happening literally in the shadow of Mary Magdalene's feast today Venus retrograde this month that is all about like exploring feminine and space and leadership in a feminine point of view rather than like to me Leo Aries kind of represents the masculine leadership and Leo kind of represents the feminine leadership just because that cat way is so feminine. And it's not about pushing forward, it's just about like, yeah, being in, in your sovereignty. And it's lovely to hear all of your astrologies, but like this is this is affecting everybody collectively because this is what the skies are doing course you can look up your personal astrology but this is 
This is about everybody. And so Chiron retrograde is about us really deep diving with ourselves and our deep and our deep wounds, the wounds that are our lifetime masterpiece wounds, the ones that give us our, our paths and our gifts, but also our whole lives are part of the healing world. And I feel like this Chiron retrograde is about that feminine leadership, is about like, can you just be and receive and trust your power so that you can have that balance, so that you can come through the sacred center, so that you can be spacious. And then on July, 27th at the end of the month Mercury who's in Leo Mercury's communication um, is conjunct with Venus in Leo with retrograding Venus in Leo and so this would be another amazing time to journal because <laughs> Mercury's all about communication um, and you know what the end of the month is about is about the the medicine <laughs> or the reward <laughs> of the month and to me it's like this is about better inner communication what do you the wisdom of your leadership is is what you hear in the space the space when you make space for yourself the end of the month is saying talking is the key and venus retrograde You've got to talk to the people that are challenging you. It's also saying, through this will come clarity. And so, this is July. What do we think about it? What do we feel about it? I'd love to hear from any of you about what you feel. In the meantime, I think it feels really like we need some feminine medicine to be honest with you. Like, I'm really excited for July and honestly, space. So, in the sanctuary, which is Starlight Subscription Service, one thing we have is a like meditation for the month, and I just recorded the one for July um, not not having looked at the astrology yet and oh my god it is amazing I think it's my favorite one we've ever recorded um, and it's about it's about space and it's about um, it's about learning that it's safe to be yourself and that's what I think July is ultimately about. It's about giving yourself enough space to feel safe to be you. And so, yeah, super, super, super cool. And um, the other really, 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 really cool thing is like, so this summer I have some quite big things on um, and they're all really amazing and exciting. And every year, for years we've run a course called Call of Magdalene which is a ceremonial journey for Mary Magdalene's feast day to connect to I use it to birth my path so my, my path cycle starts on the feast day whatever I put into the ceremonies of that week always manifest in the most amazing crazy arse way the following year every time <laughs> and like it gives me so much and it's amazing and this year I was kind of like know if there's time to do call of the magdalene maybe we'll leave it but as people started saying call of the magdalene to me and now that i know the astrology i'm like oh my god we absolutely have to do call of the magdalene um it's by donation so um if you want to come you literally just sign up and you donate whatever is in your heart afterwards um and it will definitely help you with that time if you're feeling like you want to do big stuff for the retrograde and rebirth your heart and 
connect to like sacred feminine space and unite the feminines and honestly like I, like I was so close to not doing it <laughs> like oh no 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 now I understand why everybody was saying Magdalene um, so you can click the link and open in the other in another tab um, if you want to join the sanctuary and get that amazing meditation, you can also click the link for that. And that's about it for July. The only other thing I would say is do sign up for our mailing list, especially if you like Held in Prayer, because we're going to be doing a um, Held in Prayer uh, just before the 17th. So in that integration time, we're doing the Held in Prayer at Bitterfield. So it's the first ever in person held in prayer but i was like it's not fair if the online people can't join so we're going to do a big massive global held in prayer and energized crystals that are going to be buried in shasta um and do a really beautiful piece of collective consciousness work held in prayer is also by donation and if you haven't experienced the miracle that is being held in constant prayer and how much that makes you feel harmonious and balanced and spacious and um, when we're held in prayer we're in the miracle body and so our whole because we're in oneness and our hearts are in togetherness everything we manifest everything we heal everything we intend is it is amplified and so a highly just before this amazing rebirth moment the held in prayer is going to be literally the 60th like the 14th to the 16th again didn't know about this astrology so just 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 before that moon and the nodes changing um that is a fabulous fabulous ceremony to prepare for the node change and to heal and to like connect to your higher self and to bring in the rebirth of, of, um, of the new moon and the new beginning. And so really, really amazing, magical, aligned, astrologically aligned things going on, which I think makes really good sense. And I'm going to put a card for the month. Whoa, scold the future. Is for the future, and let me read this. When you become overly fixated on the future, you rob yourself of the capacity to truly co-create a life that is meaningful and rich. It's because doing so gives your power away to something, some destination that has no substance. It, it's like you are always wandering around in a ghostly place with a goddess skull, warning, war, where goddess skull warns you to avoid. Perhaps you've been taught that there are better things to come later, like getting the wonders of heaven after difficulties of a honor. The truth is that you can get back into alignment. So consider this, your life now and how you respond to it are the seeds that will grow into your future. Your alignment task is to remove all of the weeds before they choke the life out of your intentions. Bless your life today. Find the lessons in the conditions of your world and be compassionate to yourself and others. We are all learning to find strength in our most vulnerable selves as the world changes rapidly around us. The goddess skull is with you all the way. As always. And um, yeah, I can share it again. There we go. There she is. <laughs> So, normally in Magic Month, I do a channeling or something at the end, but actually in the spirit of July and the 
um, spaciousness. And because we're doing this Magic Month quite late, I feel like we should just call it a night. <laughs> you should have some moments of space with that time that you put aside. I really hope that Magic Month has been helpful to you. Thank you all so much for coming either now or in the future. Please do share, spread the word. And when you're ready, closing your eyes. And again, dropping into that widening and that spaciousness. And that part of your body that is deep knowing and deep peace and we all so 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 much. Deep.